Hi, I'm Alice Liu, and I'm the director of the ICT for D unit at Chipaigo. Alice, what does Chipaigo do in terms of ICT for D? Well, Chipaigo works in uh, using mobile technologies and other ICTs um, in our health intervention work, um, primarily to try and support our overall work in health uh, to improve the lives of women and their families. So we um, have pioneered an approach called mobile mentoring, which is a way of applying mobile technology to um, reinforce the training and knowledge that uh, we give to our um, healthcare workers in our training programs. And that's using SMS as a kind of Using SMS and voice calls. It's a combination of both. It's, it's very low cost, but, um, but very effective as, as we're finding out. Uh, the typical problem is after you conduct a training program, the uh, healthcare worker will soon forget the knowledge and just like with any of us um, uh, you know use it or lose it and not only do they might not um, retain it because it's just time has gone gone by but also when they go back to um, the uh, facility where they're based they might not have the same resources that they had in the training program so they lose um, the opportunity to practice what they learn. So that's another reason for the, the lack of uh, retention of the knowledge. And give me so. an overview of the other areas of projects that you have. Right. We um, do work um, using, um, using some tools for clinical decision support. So these are mobile applications on a smartphone or a tablet, um, providing support to a community health worker or a facility health worker like a nurse. Um, and provides that point of care support for them while they're seeing a patient, guiding them through questions to ask. We also have been applying GIS to help us plan uh, some of our work in voluntary medical male circumcision, where to, where to locate our um, programs and conduct, conduct uh, campaigns, uh, you know, where men are likely, the men are likely to be in the uh, you know, target group that we're after. Um, and we uh, are using um, uh, technology like Cisco technology for, um, to enable virtual classrooms, as we call it, in India. And that uh, addresses the, the teacher shortage uh, because we, what now we can do is have one um, uh, teacher conducting a class, but multiple classrooms um, in, the, you know, in the entire province being able to view that, um, that's, that lecture. Um, we're also using e-learning platforms. Uh, we have worked with Intel to use our platform called School to provide um, training modules on the on the computer. Again, uh, you know that's something that they can use offline. But and um, when they, uh, they they first download the module, so they do have to be online initially. But they can work on it offline, and um, they work through the training modules and also uh, take the tests and um, the scores are captured and uh, again that can be uploaded when there's uh, connectivity or when they're back uh, in a facility to, um, to upload the information. So there's a wide range of... of Different um, projects. Yes, yes. It's, um, and if we take the uh, clinical decision support um, work that you're doing, mm -hmm, right. Tell me, where, where is that? What scale is it at at the moment? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, one of our, um, uh, I think our first places where we apply this is in Tanzania, uh, as well as uh, Zanzibar. But in uh, Tanzania, we um, applied a, a tool called DTree, which uh, is the platform, the mobile application and the database that's in the cloud um, to uh, provide antenatal care and postnatal care. And we um, provided the smartphones, to community health workers and facility health workers. So it enabled them to follow the Ministry of Health guidelines to ask all the proper questions of a pregnant woman or in, for the postnatal care, obviously, the new mother, to ensure that we're capturing all the danger signs, all the uh, other um, health issues. And there's and an underlying algorithm that will yes, the, identify those. Right, and that's, that's the, uh, the probably one of the more um, unique aspects of this application is that um, the algorithm will flag, uh, you know, if there are any risks and, um, and make recommendations. So, for instance, um, by collecting the information about the pregnant woman, it will flag that a hospital um, antenatal care visit is recommended or a hospital delivery because, for instance, maybe the woman is under 16 years of age. This is a high-risk pregnancy. Or she's HIV-AIDS positive. Um, 
So based again on the rules um, that have been built into the tool, it will make these recommendations. And it's a pilot at the moment, isn't it? So it's relatively small scale, but what, what scale will it be run on before too long? Well, it's yes, it is small scale right now. We hope that um, going forward, it's, it's going to go beyond. It's, it's been with about, uh, I think a dozen or so health workers and um, probably about the same number of community health workers. But in terms of number of women reached, um, I'm trying to remember the, the, the data from the last um, uh, time we discussed this project, but I think there were over 3,000 women registered in the system, just again through yeah. the, the, I think about a year that this, this was uh, being used, maybe it was a little over a year. And um, so the potential reach is quite large and it is um, being adopted by other projects in Tanzania. The Ministry of Health is, is, um, has been very supportive and they are talking about uh, you know, figuring out how they can budget for it. So um, there is a lot of, uh, I think, acceptance, if you will. So mm -hmm. now it's about, I think, making the, the reality of the funding available so that it can, it can uh, survive beyond uh, the you know, initial pilots and uh, small-scale implementations from the donors. If we look five years forward from here, all of the work that you've talked about, all of the different applications, mm -hmm. what do you think the implications are if those things are scaled up? Mm -hmm. Well, the implications, I think there's, there's, there's a few. Um, we, I would hope to see that we have, um, we have more of these applications in more facilities, um, ideally nationwide. I mean, we are all, as I'm sure other people in this field are, you know, kind of tired of the small scale projects. We know the real impact is when you get to national scale. And there's, technologically, it's possible. We know that. It's, it's the reasons it's not national scale are not because of the technology. So um, we hope that um, as each implementation uh, is done, there's learning uh, from those implementations. There's um, increased buy-in. There's also, we're seeing more integration of these applications. And I think the more integration we see, the better the business case will be to adopt these. You know, right now we might have one, uh, you know, maternal health application, maybe there's an immunization application, but really there's no technical reason why they have to be separate. It's because of the, f the way projects are funded. Mm -hmm. So once we get to an integration um, of these applications, the, I think the, the case for, for these systems will be much easier to make. And the, the, and the follow-on impact will then be that much greater because, again, it's not isolated impacts. It's going to be, I think, the snowball effect from the integration of these And there's systems. an issue to do with paper, isn't there, in paper systems? Yes, and it's uh, in most uh, of these uh, facilities in, in the rural areas, especially with no power, um, you know, everyone's still working off of uh, paper registers. And... Um, that's that these are the ministry uh, you, know, you know defined sanctioned registers you have to continue using them someday um I, I hope to see that those will go away because it is painful to watch um not just the regist registering a woman who comes in for a visit it's the monthly tallies and other tallies they have to do hand-counted hand-submitted counted, hand submitted up the chain uh, of, of uh, to the to the top level and we all know all of us who work in technology that um, one record of a woman visit on this day this is her age this is where she's from you don't need to ta manually tally that to know um, you know how many people visited from this region how many visit this month um, what were their reasons for the visit? All of this can be easily calculated with you know, in micro, you know, microseconds from these transactional records. And as I say, you know, you know, Amazon isn't manually counting up all of their uh, sales. Yeah. Um, I, I hope we we will get there. And there are some good projects actually working on this right now and kind of uh, implementing uh, other ways of uh, you know implementing okay. electronic registers. And it's it's because we've now got the, the suite of technologies, really, um, uh, because in the beginning we had PCs, but PCs were still mm. expensive, you need power, um, there's no connectivity. Then, and you had, you've had databases even be before PCs. Now you have mobile networks. Now you have mobile devices that are affordable. Now you have systems in the cloud. 
Now we and have all the ingredients. And they can work both online and offline. Yes, and that's the key is that now these, uh, because of the technology companies that work in this uh, uh, space, healthcare in, in uh, you know, low resource environments, all the applications they develop work both offline mode, so you can collect data or review data, um, and then you can sync up later on when you've got connectivity. And the, the, the fact is now we've, we've broken through some of these barriers, that PCs were too expensive and connectivity was a problem and power is a problem. But now, now these barriers are coming down because we've got the, f the solution that can work in these environments. The mobile technology that's affordable, the devices are affordable, the systems that are in the cloud, the, the data that can be captured without being connected to the cloud all the time. Now we're starting, I think, to see the, that, that uh, some of the, the, I think, the benefits from, from technology that we were hoping for, I think, back in uh, you know, back the early in the days. Yeah, yeah. yeah.